Well, CC American National Catholic Church. Today we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter. Also, it's Greek Easter. So happy Easter. Anyone Greek here today? Um, and our entrance in is going to be number 728. The morning has broken. So let us all stand and greet our celebrant. Join together and sing number 728. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing, praise for the morning, praise for them spring. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. And I ask the Blessed Mary and her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God, the Father, of mercies through the death and resurrection of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, has sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the church, may God grant you pardon and peace, and I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
that in exile May all the peoples praise you The nations on the earth does not keep my words, 
Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives it do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away and I will come back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to my Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. My sisters and brothers, the good news of our salvation, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. By the words of our gospel, may it be God's word. It's been a while, I think, since I proclaimed the gospel, having Brother G.T. with me, and I did not the crucifix off the altar, so, uh, so don't read too much into that, right? Don't read too much into that. Um, this is, a, this is a, a, wonderful, uh, a wonderful celebration today that we have. In so many ways, I was thinking about these readings, and I was thinking about what we're going to do here today in a couple minutes in Crown the Blessed Mother, and I was thinking about us in terms of our traditions as Catholics and what we sometimes come to do and, and how we understand the meaning of each of us in our own life. And I was thinking about this idea of God coming to make his home with us, that God loves us so much that he comes and makes his home with us and we with God, right? What an amazing sense that is. And I was thinking that that's what we're coming to do a little bit today. We are coming with the affection of children to honor our mother, Mater Ecclesia, the mother of the church, right? And so, so I was thinking about these readings. In the first reading we have, we have this uh, story of a little controversy that happened in the early church. And just so you know, uh, if you think everything is smooth and peaceful, it isn't. When human beings come together, there is always, there's a joke in seminary, what do you have? When, uh, whenever you have four priests, a fifth, just a two, just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, well, five opinions is what I should say. <laughs> but, but here's the idea. The, 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 the Christians, you and I, and that's why we hear, by the way, from this uh, chapter 13 of John, it is Jesus' long farewell. And the reason that we hear from this these last two Sundays is because the, the community like us was trying to understand who Jesus was for them in light of his resurrection. And so we hear this, we hear this where Jesus says, I'm telling you this now so that the Holy Spirit will remind you that you heard it before, especially when you're scared and frightened and not knowing what's happening, that I love you and that I have come and made my home with you. And I was thinking about how this happens with families sometimes. So this first reading that we have, we have um, the, uh, the Jewish community wanting to uh, impose on the Gentile community uh, the requirements to become Jewish, including circumcision. And the Gentiles wanted no parts of that, right? And so there arose this controversy, which was probably two conferences at Jerusalem, which was settled. And finally, uh, and hear this, this is so amazing how the Holy Spirit still moves through the church. In the early church, the apostles said, by the working of the Holy Spirit, this is our decision. Right? And then there were just three things. And so it seemed that that controversy got kind of resolved. Later on, we, as, as a Christian community, as we came to understand um, uh, Christ as the Messiah, it became a little bit more, uh, a little bit more uh, div divisive and then we were uh, asked to leave the temple. But in many ways, this first early decision represents for us uh, the Holy Spirit moving in a different way. And we heard last week how, uh, behold, I will make all things new. And so we hear this, we hear this, this newness, this, this, uh, this fresh wind that comes with the Holy Spirit as we prepare for that uh, in, in the celebration of Pentecost. And then the second reading is, is the, is, it, it's used visionary language to talk about the, uh, the beauty of the church, the new Jerusalem, right? And, and uh, during Holy Week, and especially on Good Friday, we as Christians, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, our holy city. And so what we hope for, we, 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 we envision this wonderful new Jerusalem in which we will all be together in, 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 in peace and loving ways. And so, so we hear that. And then finally, this gospel, there's a, a, a brilliant a woman theologian, Catherine Lacuna. She, has a, she was a professor at Notre Dame, and she went home to God early in her life. She had breast cancer, and she, uh, she succumbed to that. But she wrote a beautiful book uh, called The Triune God. And she began her, her, uh, her book with uh, uh, presenting the reader with an image of the Trinity as the household of God. And I thought, what a beautiful image, right? That the Trinity as the household of God. 
And we speak in Greek about a perichoretic energy at the heart of the Trinity. Perichoresis means a dance of love. Isn't that beautiful? And that's what the Trinity does with itself, this dance of love. So, but she speaks about the Trinity, God as this household. And so I was thinking about that us, uh, for us today. And so all through these mystagogia, these 50 days between Easter and Pentecost, we hear certain dimensions of who Christ and God is for us. We come together as a family. We come to recognize that for some of, for all of us here, at least in this space and time, there is something about the Word of God that has made its home in us. And so we come here to be nourished in that, or, or we use it to guide our actions when we're not here. And we come here to be together so that we can celebrate the fact that we are at home here. And so we do things that people do at home. We hear how, how Jesus is for us a gentle shepherd. We hear how God is for us a loving father. And today what we recognize is, is that the, the affection of a mother for us gathers us together as church. Because of Mary's yes, because of, because of that moment in history, in time and space, when she said yes to God's invitation to become the mother of the Messiah, the whole world has changed. It has changed for us. Nothing is the same as a result of that. She didn't know. We think that maybe she was 14 or 15. She was certainly engaged but unmarried. And, and, and so this yes was a tremendous... By the way, even today, uh, every Jewish woman, she believes she can be the mother of the Messiah. That's why, that's why at a bris there's a chair for Elijah, right? So every Jewish mother, uh, when she bears a son, believes that she can be the mother of the Messiah. What a beautiful thought that is. Mary actually believed it and acted on it in faith and said yes to God, despite what the consequences were. And so because of that, the whole world has changed. We know that Mary's, uh, Mary's love of, of Christ as her son followed him through to the cross. And it was her at the foot of the cross with Mary, the mother of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene, and the other women, and John. We know this tremendous love that Mary had for her son, which extends to us as well. And so as we gather today, what we do is we recognize uh, in our home, we recognize here in this place, uh, which we have come to, to be comfortable in. The prayers are familiar to us. The language is familiar. The dialogue that we have isn't alien to us. We come to recognize that this word, which has taken root in our hearts, and which God has made his home in us, reflects for us a peace that, that is beyond description. There's a peace that Christ offers us as a result of us feeling at home, feeling not frightened, not having to be vigilant about anything, in which we can really enter into a tremendous peace. And so what we do today is, is we acknowledge Mary in, in, in the dimension of her as mother, mother of the Messiah, in her dimension of Mary the sorrowful mother at the foot of the cross. We, we acknowledge her as Mary uh, who celebrated the resurrection of her son, who believed that when the angel asked her to be the mother of the Messiah that all of this would happen and she said yes to that. And so we, we acknowledge her today uh, in that dimension, but also in the dimension of a young girl who said yes. A young girl who, despite what may have happened to her, she continued to accept God's invitation to love. And that's what we are asked to do today. And we hear this again in this, in this Jesus is saying to his disciples, he said, listen, I know you're going to be afraid and frightened, and I know some things are going to happen, and I know that you're going to doubt. And he said, but don't worry, I want you to remember this is what I said to you. And I'm saying this to you now before I leave, so that the Holy Spirit will prompt you to memory again around this love that I have for you when you most need it, right? You know that. You and I all know that. There have been moments in our life when unexpectedly grace has come to us and things happen and we cannot explain it, right? There is nothing in us that it can, can, can explain what happened. And that moment, that operative grace that comes into our life is because of Mary's yes, because of this, 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 this wonderful courage and faith that she had to continue to say less, yes to that. I, I often say this to the bride before, uh, before we go downstairs or before we go to get married, that on this day, you are doing exactly what Mary did. You're saying yes to God's invitation to love. Not knowing what the future holds, you still say yes to that. And I think not just for brides or those who are newly married, us as well. Every time we come here, every time we risk loving, every time we risk moving through our fear towards the other, we do what Mary did. We follow her with great, with, with, with great courage. And so today we honor her, we crown her. And in crowning her, we honor all women today. We recognize that, that all women share in the dignity uh, of the Blessed Mother. And so, so let's not forget that, right? That, that as we move as a, as a Christian people, uh, uh, and we, uh, we celebrate the dignity of all human beings, women included, 
that every time we honor Mary, we honor all women. It's always very interesting to me as a Catholic that we have this wonderful developed theology of Mary, and then we won't let women be priests. That doesn't make any sense to me, right? But here at the American National Catholic Church, we don't have that. We're, we're, a, little, uh, we're a little broader in understanding that. The last thing that I want to say about this love and how it moves us to great forgiveness, right before I, I became, uh, right before I uh, started Mass today, I always had a little time to recollect, but I didn't have much time today because I was hearing first confessions. And, uh, and I was, uh, I just, I, I tell you the truth, I'm almost moved to tears sometimes uh, by the, the, the beauty of the life that God gives us in the sacraments of his church and uh, of her church. And it is astounding to me that there are moments in our life in which we have experienced either through, through each other or through a representative of the church this tremendous outpouring of God's love and mercy. I think in all of the sacraments we do. We hear echoes of mercy and whispers of love, and so when I was with these uh, young children just a little while ago, I was I was I was uh, I was uh, I was, uh, I was so I, almost beyond words, right? Their their absolute uh, innocence and desire to be close to God probably represents for us uh, uh, that as well, right? And so so it reminds me that that we should really uh, be like little children, right? We should we should really be like little children. So uh, so we're going to continue. Um, I think we're going to, uh, if you'll stand with me, we're going to do a, uh, uh, we're going to have our children do a little bit of a procession. We're going to sing uh, hymns, and we're going to crown this group of Scottish and the Blessed Mother. I'm going to put my hat on, and then I'll be right back. All right. Let's all join together and sing number 432, Sing of Mary. That's number 432.
considered the, uh, the main court, right? So you are attendance to our lady today. So, uh, so come let us worship Christ our Savior through the Son of Mary. My brothers and sisters, we have come to crown this image of Mary. This ceremony reminds us that the greatest in the kingdom are those who serve and with love. Our Lord himself came to serve and not be served, and Our Lady was the humble servant of the Lord when she was on earth. Now in the, glo now in the glory of heaven, she is still the God of error who cares about our salvation. She is the minister of holiness and queen of love. O oh God, since you have given us Mary, the mother of your son, to be our mother and our queen, queen, grant that we who crown her image may attain the glory of your children in the kingdom of heaven. And we ask this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
congregations may reflect his light to a darkened world. We pray. Risen the Lord, we hear our prayer. That the first and the last, the one who lives and holds the keys to death in the netherworld, comfort all those in hospice and strengthen those who care for the sick and the dying. Risen the Lord, hear our prayer. That the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, the lamb who was slain and shepherds us, leads the exiles and displaced to springs of life giving water and wipe away every tear from their eyes. We pray. Risen the Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of the kings of the earth, guide the nations to turn their weapons to implements of peace. We pray. Praise the Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy One, the true one who has the key of David, who stands at the door and knocks, that those who have not experienced the love of God open their hearts to the glorified one. We pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been unjustly accused, that the innocent one who was crucified will give them strength and hope as they endure suffering and hardship, we pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For all the elect and candidates, that the living bread from heaven will deepen their desire for the Eucharist and fill them with love through the Holy Spirit. We pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. That the American National Catholic Church, born from the blood and water flowing from the side of the crucified and risen Christ, we may speak a word of hope and renewal to all who are burdened and yearning for life. We pray. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. That the bright morning star, the first and the last, comfort all the sick. And are there any whom we should especially lift up to the Lord for healing and comfort? For Jim, Michelle Blum, for Joseph, for Judy's brother uh, Stephen, who is having uh, uh, heart surgery, and for uh, Ted, and for Debbie Bramner, Bob Williams. We pray. This is the Lord. Hear our prayer. That the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, give water without price from the fountain of life to all who have gone before us. And we pray for all of the victims in Boston and all of our servicemen who have been killed in Afghanistan this past week. And are there any other day that we should especially be mindful of? Party. For Dad Custom. For these, we pray to the Lord. Risen to the Lord, hear our prayer. Join with me in praying for our um, students who will be receiving uh, their first communion in June. That God, uh, uh, that God might uh, uh, touch them in, in ways in which they might uh, 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 show His love in the world. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Most high, glorious God, we bring you our prayers and petitions, those which you've spoken aloud and those in the depths of our heart. We ask you to hear and answer them as they be for our good, for we make them in the name of Christ your Son. Amen. 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 As our gifts are gathered and prepared, we invite you to join with us and sing number 650, Prayer of St. Francis. Number 650. Make me a channel of your peace. Aries, be true, let me bring your love. Aries, injury or pardon, Lord. Be 
gave it to all of those whom he loved and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. Gave the cup to all of those whom he loved and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, calling to mind the death your Son endured for our salvation, his glorious resurrection, and ascension into heaven. And ready to greet him when he comes again, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and see the victim whose death has reconciled us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by his body and blood may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance of your saints with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and the martyrs, St. Francis and St. Clair, and all your saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. Lord, may this sacrifice, which has made our peace with you, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servants, the patriarchs, our Bishop George, and all the bishops, with the clergy and the entire people your son has gathered for you, Father. Hear the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you. In memory, in mercy and love, unite all your children wherever they may be. Welcome into your kingdom, our departed brothers and sisters, and all who have left this world in your friendship. We hope to enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord, from whom all good things come. <laughs> through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever.
Number 575, only this I want. That's number 575. Let's 
Almighty and ever-living Lord, you restored us to life by rising Christ from the dead. Strengthen us by this Easter sacraments. May we feel its saving power in our daily life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Sometimes I don't want to break the meditative atmosphere after uh, communion, right? I, uh, uh, I feel like uh, we can stay for a while, right? But maybe not. Maybe not. I want to thank, uh, I want to thank our, um, our guest uh, choir member, uh, Pete, who... Uh, who uh, It'd be careful if you show up twice you go to work, right? So, but last time he was here, and Maureen, she didn't, she didn't do it, right? Someone said, oh, he has a beautiful voice, and then I found out that he does uh, sing in part, so we conscripted him today. So thank you very much, our, our guest uh, choir member. Right? Thank you so much. Thank you. developed an altar society here, just so you know. Um, and, uh, uh, and as you know, that, that part of our uh, atmosphere of worship is paying attention to our home. Uh, and so we have uh, wonderful people who do that for us. So thank you so much for that and, and this beautiful uh, decoration crowning our, our Blessed Mother. So thank you for that. Thank you for the gift of that. Thank you to our May Court, too. these beautiful rose petals, right? So, absolutely. It looks like you got every last one. <laughs> that was a really good thing. That was a really good thing. Um, after, after Mass is a bunch of you, you can join us, please do. Who's new today? Anybody new today? Tell us where you're from. Uh, Montclair. Tell, Mont tell us your name, sorry. Oh, Ken mm -hmm. and Olivia. From Montclair. Um, I'm from Wyoming. Olivia's from Montclair. Mm -hmm. And they'll be getting married on July 13th. So. Oh. And you, how are you doing? I'm Patty from Hi, Patty. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to that. First time? 
very much. I don't know anything about Patty, so I can't tell you. She's my sister. Oh, there you go. I'm not a whole other man. Anybody on this side? Yes. Claire from New Hampshire. Oh, Claire, welcome from New Hampshire. Well, welcome, right? So, uh, Come be part of us when you can, right? So come be part of us when you can. Please keep Judy's brother in your prayer, Judy and Vince. Uh, uh, and Alton, I don't know if we have any of those things. Jane? Any? No. No? We're good? We're all good. Um, pray for us here. In June, we're hoping to expand a little bit to Verona um, to have mass on Saturday nights there. I don't think that will uh, attract many of you, but. But, uh, but we're, uh, as you know, uh, all, all, all Catholics are, uh, are committed to the spreading of the faith. And so I love the, the uh, intercessions that uh, Lou has written for us, especially that last one about the American National Catholic Church being uh, a witness in the world to uh, renewal and the uh, inclusive nature of God's love in our life. So keep us in your prayers, all right? So we have a sister parish in Long Branch. We may be developing a sister parish in Verona. And, uh, and so please keep that in your prayers, all right? So, and June 9th is the uh, picnic, and June 8th will be the first Saturday at Mass at 5 o'clock. All right, so they're anxious to have us. I don't know why, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but keep, that in, keep that in your prayers, all right? Bow down your head and pray for God's blessing. Through the, res through, through the resurrection of the Son, God has redeemed you and made you his children. May he bless you with joy. Amen. 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 The Redeemer has given you lasting freedom. May you inherit his everlasting life. Amen. 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 By faith you rose with him in baptism. May your lives be holy so that you will be united with him forever. Amen. 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 And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth from here in great peace and joy to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us all join together as we go forth and sing number 444, Lift High the Cross. That's number four.